Good morning, students. Welcome to the second semester's orientation program. I'm David Hopstad. I'm going to be program directing today. And thank you for joining us. It's a little bit cold where I am. So as you see, I'm actually using PowerPoint to actually present who I am and where I am. So yes, welcome students. Um, just take note, please do post your questions in the QA. Um, you can send your questions in. We do have colleagues that will be helping us in answering those questions. So please feel free to send us those questions as well. Today, colleagues, is the first day of two days. We are going to be tackling quite a number of items. As you can see, our program is jam packed. We have a lot of presenters and they will be able to then present uh, different topics to you. So things that you might want to know about. And then, of course, we can see we've got day one and then we've also got day two that also runs uh, from tomorrow at the same time. So please do join us as well. I just want to quickly check um, Prof Mahono is our VC and that stands for the vice principal. Um, or, or acting, sorry, executive director for Department of Tuition Support and Facilitation of Learning, the TDSFL. So if you hear that word, now you know what it is. She's a professor in the psychology of education and also the UF, UWF chairperson. I just want to quickly check is Prof on the platform. OK, if Prof hasn't arrived, Colleagues, unfortunately, there might be a technical problem on the side, but welcome students. We appreciate that you guys are joining us today. As I said, we've got quite a lot of things that we're going to work through and. Really what we want to do here for you guys is to understand student support and the role of students in the open distance e-learning university, because now we know that it is a challenge and we know from prov uh, previous experience that it is quite a challenge to study from distance to the university itself. And that's why we really want to use new students to understand who we are, where we are, and how we can support you. There are a lot of support structures in place as you're going to hear over today and tomorrow and um, that you can engage to, to really make sure that you enhance your studies and that you would be successful as a first time entering student. Um, it does take dedication and you're going to need to organize yourselves pretty well, but the support is there. So once you have done today, please do hop along to the MyUNISA platform and please go to login, claim your login details and make sure that you can access your MyLife email account as well. Those are critical to get you going for the semester. Registrations is only closing to eighth where the minimum payment must also be due. Uh, why are we hosting this workshop so soon? Because the second semester is very, very short in terms of the time available. So that's why we do push it a bit to ensure that you guys are up and running as soon as possible to get on with your studies. Now, without further ado, I'd like to invite the student retention unit, Ms. F Zianda Fabana, who is then going to discuss the role and services of the student retention unit and how to access and contact them as well if you need be. Over to you, Zianda. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Good afternoon to all our first year students and welcome to UNISA, South Africa's largest ODEL institution. I am Zianda Fabana, and today I'll be taking you through the roles and services of the Student Retention Unit. So as, we, as I mentioned, I'm from the Student Retention Unit and our motto for the Student Retention Unit is forging a culture of highly successful first year students. How do we do this? We do this through our first year experience program, which aims to extend support to students entering UNISA for the first time. We do this by providing essential information during crucial points in the student journey. We have dedicated support uh, programs, as the program manager said, which is the first year experience work um, orientation, the FYE support side, and the FYE student toolbox. 
But before we get into the resources, we also would like to get you ready for ODL. I think the things that you need to know is that to ensure a swift transition to learning and support, you will need access to a computer as well as internet and connectivity. This will, this will enable you to access online resources, assessments, as well as submit examinations and other academic tasks conveniently. Now, as I mentioned, we do have an FYE web orientation because at SRU, we understand that during this period, as you transition to ODEL, you may feel overwhelmed with information. But don't worry, we do have a web orientation that you can learn at self pace. We created this online orientation that you can access it at any time to ensure that you're well prepared for the open distance e-learning environment and give yourself a head start. Now, I will share this, um, this, uh, Sorry, this QR code in the chat um, if you did not get a picture of it. Now let's watch a quick video in terms of how and sorry, let's watch a quick video so we can so you can see for yourself how we at the SRU are invested in ensuring a first a successful first year. We understand, we understand that, that learning, learning at an ODEL institution may be, may be isolating. isolating. And, to and to ensure, ensure that, that you do not feel lonely, we at the SRU will regularly keep in touch with you through our weekly emails on important information and upcoming academic support programs. Because your success is the core of our services, these emails will cover various topics such as preparing for assessments and exams, Remember, it is important that you claim your MyUNISA logins and activate your MyLife email account. The FYE support site was created to make access to important information and support materials easier. On this site, you'll find resources that will assist you in your first year journey at UNISA. Here, you'll also find the FYE student toolbox which is a quick guide to all the resources you may need to become a successful student at UNISA. These resources include online student orientation. At the SRU, we understand that during this period of transitioning to an ODEL institution, you may feel overwhelmed with information. We therefore created an online orientation video that you can access at any time to ensure that you are well prepared for the open distance learning environment and give yourself a head start. Another point, UNISA helps students with their academic reading and writing skills through the academic literacy program, which you can also access using the site. Here, you will also get schedules of workshops that are provided by UNISA regional services near you. You'll also get self-paced how-to videos through our massive open online courses, MOOCs for short, on how to become a successful online learner. As you can see, making use of the site will ensure that you have a successful first year experience. Thank you for that. And I will also share this infographic with you on uh, our chat box, this is a seven step kickstart for first year students at UNISA. As you can see, you have just, you have, um, we met with you um, during our FYE MOOC, which is the MOOC that you had to complete before you um, accepted the offer, which now you completed as we're preparing to wrap up registration. We also have a couple of programs and a couple of links that you can access um, with you uh, sorry, we also have a couple of links that you can access at your own pace to ensure that you have a smooth journey at UNISA. I'll share this in the chat box to ensure that you have all the resources to your disposal to ensure that you have a successful first year student. Um, thank you, and that will be it from my side. All right, thank you, Zianda. Um, 
Thank you for the presentation with this student retention unit. So there you have it students. So please do make use of the resources available and contact them if you need support during your first semester. So next up is going to be our colleagues from the student admin and registration and I'm going to call Mr. Nadim Korodia uh, to speak to you guys about understanding how to deal with the various registration processes. So over to you Nadim. Thank you very much David. Thank you very much Sianda, much appreciated for the kind words. And welcome students. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, today I'm going to give you a quick walkthrough in regards to our application and registration processes. As you know, with UNISA, you would have to apply before you can register. And because we are an ODEL institution and we are in the 21st century, everything is happening on the web. On our website, which is very user friendly, you will find um, all the information necessary to apply and register with UNISA. On our website, www.unisa.ac.za, you will find the application tab under admissions. A quick walkthrough through that. Unfortunately, applications for 2023 has closed for first semester as well as second semester. The 2024 application dates have not been released yet. However, they would be released in the next few months. Um, so I would advise you to just keep a lookout for that. However, this is what our admission apply for admissions page looks like depending on what qualification you would like to apply for for the purpose of this um introduction to unisa we'll just go through the undergraduate qualification okay on this particular page it will explain to you the different steps it will to give you the necessary information as to what an ODEL is. Um, you would be able to find your specific career by following the steps and it a great assistance for you. So my advice would be use it. Um, it is to your benefit. You will be able to then choose your qualification on step three. From the different colleges, there are se uh, seven different colleges. You'll be able to view the the different qualification levels as well. And step four, you would be able to then submit your application. And with your application on this particular page, step four, it will give you all the necessary information and requirements for you to apply. Um, thereafter, once you have submitted your application, you would have to wait for your application outcome. And that will be on step five. Like Sianda was explaining, there will be a first experience of a MOOC, Massive Open Online course, and then you will receive your acceptance offer. For the purpose of this, you have received a, for the purpose of this uh, introduction, you've received a positive outcome and your application was successful. You will then move on to the registration process on the same UNISA website, www.unisa.ac.za. Under the admissions tab, you will find a register to study through UNISA link. And once you've clicked on that, and for the purpose of this introduction, we're going to go through the undergraduate qualification and honors and honors degree and postgraduate diploma process. Within this, again, it's a walkthrough. It's self-explanatory, and all the necessary information to register is on uh, the the website. Step one. 
find the qualification that you had, you apply for and the specific modules you will then choose your specific modules you intend to register either for that specific academic year or academic semester unisa does have two semesters which is from january february to may june and from june july to october november and certain qualifications have year modules which registration takes place between the january february registration period and the examinations will be within the october november examination period semester modules um, the examinations will either take place within the may june examination period or the october november examination period however you will be able to find that information on step one once you have viewed your qualification and the curriculum in the specific modules. So just a quick run through the different colleges, the different qualifications, as well as the examination timetable and transitional arrangements. So that's additional information. Step two, that is when you will then calculate your study fees for that particular year or academic semester. And you will then be able to obtain a quotation from the website as well. On this page as well, you would find information in regards to um, bursaries as well as NUSFAS funding. Moving on, once you have submitted your request to register for those specific modules and you have um, obtained your quotation, the fees for those modules, you will then make payment and move on to step three where you would submit both your modules and payment in order for your registration to be processed. Again, everything is a walkthrough. Everything will be explained to you step by step as you move on. And that is step three and step four. And step five. Step five will give you all the necessary information to study through distance learning. With distance learning, what UNISA, there is a My UNISA account. It's a My UNISA portal where all the necessary information about your specific modules will be placed on there. And the My Life email account, which is a UNISA account, will be issued to you simultaneously. And that is for all your UNISA communication. I hope that has helped. If you have any questions, you're most welcome to ask within the Q&A and, and I will respond to that as soon as I can. I hope everything was in order, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you very much for attending today. Back to you, David. Thank you, Nareem. Much appreciated. There we go, students. So I know the registration period is almost finished, uh, but as you could see, it's pretty straightforward process. Um, please do post your questions in the Q&A. Um, and I suppose we'll also post some of the contact email addresses you can use in the chat. And after the post event as well, we'll also send out information so it's easy for you to access. All right, so next on the platform is our dear colleague, Ms. Fukati Nunglovu, and she's going to be speaking about understanding of the services rendered by UNISA for students with disabilities. So guys, uh, let's have a see how this is going to work. And if you have a disability, I know you've got to be a, quite brave um, to step up, fill in the forms, but there are benefits that also come along. So over to you, Fukati. Uh, Vukati, must just unmute yourself, please. 
Thank you. I'm sorry. Good day, colleagues and our student. Uh, I'm not alone. I'm with Mr. Nkuna. So I have realized that our presentation, it look alike. So I'll request Mr. Nkuna to give a presentation and then uh, I will do some editions. Thank you. Over to you, Mr. Nkuna. Thank you, Ms. Vakati. Um, we're going to play a video, guys. Uh, we've already preloaded a video, so I'm just going to ask my colleague Godfrey to quickly share it from his side, and then we will continue. OK, I see the <laughs> VLC player wants to install first. OK, um, we're just going to give you a few more seconds, uh, Mr. Godfrey, and then we will quickly pull it across as soon as the video comes live. Um, I see it's a little bit of a technical boo boo on that one. But yes, yeah, students, uh, please do also see on the UNISA website, there is a link specifically for Aksuite. Uh, which is the unit that uh, deals with disabilities. And there's a lot of information there that you can access, which will make uh, your lives a little bit easier in terms of what you need to do, how you need to do it, which forms you need to fill in and what doctor's notes you need, things like that. And um, that will definitely help you. Are you winning, Mr. Godfrey? Yeah, uh, I'm winning. I'm winning, David. Just a sec. All right, great. I think you must just check the sound. Center for students with disabilities. Um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the Advocacy and Resource Center for Students with Disability. Uh, was established to provide for the wide uh, range of needs of students with disabilities. Um, it provides quite a number of services, including assisting students with disabilities to complete application and registration uh, online, advise students to complete special assistance form. And one may ask, what is this special assistance form? This is a form whereby you indicate uh, the kind of study material that you need as per your individual needs. Just to give an example, you find that there are two blind students, uh, only to find that these two blind students, they require different set of study material. One may require brain, and the other one may require audio material. It is therefore important that you complete this particular form. We also convert study material into different formats as per your individual needs, including uh, having accessible electronic material, braille, light print, and audio. Uh, as you can see, we have Memabaso on the screen, who is our sign language interpreter. Then the service is available as and when required by our deaf and hard of hearing students. We continue to provide inputs to the My UNISA and My Life Task team to ensure that needs for students with disabilities are taken into account. We also established and launched multi-purpose computer labs in different regions to ensure that students with disabilities are able to have access to uh, the different access technology which accommodates their diverse needs. In the spirit of nothing about us without us, we established regional forums and association for students with disabilities to ensure that students with disabilities are able to advise the university on matters that affect themselves. We also provide training on orientation and mobility to our blind and partial sighted students. Um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this orientation and mobility, uh, maybe just to give an example, in cases whereby you come across a person who's using a white cane to, uh, while walking around, then in order for this student to use this white cane, they are receiving a training from the university. Uh, while orientation refers to awareness of the environment, mobility refers to the techniques used to travel from one place to another. 
And we also request concessions with regard to extensions of assignments. In cases where by students, they need extension because of their disability or medical needs. Uh, we also assist students to apply for special examination arrangements uh, within the university. One may ask, what is this special examination arrangements? From time to time, we find that students with disabilities, they require uh, extended time to write their exams. You can apply uh, for this by completing the, the form that is available from the university. Uh, the form should be completed by your, should be uh, signed by a doctor, giving detailed explanation on how can we reasonably accommodate you. By requesting you to, uh, to take this form to your doctor, we are not taking you back to medical modeling. We want to make sure that we provide reasonable accommodation that will ensure access for success. We also advocate for alternative assessments in cases whereby you are unable to, to write exams or the prescribed assessments. Uh, just to give an example, um, you can do oral exams on teams as per your disability. Uh, we also advise our exam sections to consider students with disabilities when they allocate resources. And in collaboration with our sister uh, department, which is student funding, we ask the students to apply for financial assistance, which covers uh, their prescribed books, tuition fees, laptops, uh, medical assessment and human support. Then uh, the assistive devices depends on their individual needs. Uh, it could be a laptop with a screen reader for students who are blind or, uh, or students with uh, learning disabilities, the screen readers, uh, just to mention amongst others, uh, it could be JAWS or NVDA, and also students with low vision can also apply for laptop with text magnification software, which is known as Zoom test, motorized wheelchairs for our students who are with paraplegia, manual wheelchairs for our students with paraplegia and amputees, digital recorders, hearing aids, payment for sign language interpretation services, and human support. Uh, what will ask, what is this human support? From time to time, students with disabilities, they need support from either their family or from an external stakeholder. Then when, when these people provide the support, they can be compensated from the library, from, the, from this uh, funding. Um, I must emphasize that students with disabilities, even if you receive the assistive device, you still receive the allowance because of the of your uh, unique needs. We also liaise with publishers both locally and internationally to ensure that students with disabilities who have print disabilities receive uh, electronic textbooks. In order for you to receive the service, there's a one page form that you complete at the point of registration or at the uh, nearest uh, UNISA center where you you confirm that you'll only use this material for your studies. You won't open your own personal shop and sell the books to fellow students. In the past, we had students who received these electronic copies of prescribed books and decided to make copies and sell them. That is copyright violation. Please refrain from doing that. Uh, we also have advocacy campaigns to continue raising awareness about the needs uh, of students with disabilities throughout the institution. Training and development to our staff members to keep up with with disability related matters. We also provide support to the graduation uh, office in collaboration with graduation departments and regions. To ensure that parking spaces, accessible graduation venues, and the conversion of programs in alternative formats uh, are available and also determine a need for an accompanying person and a sign language interpreter. Ladies and gentlemen, just imagine it's your graduation day only to find that you are deaf and on that uh, session there's no sign language interpreter, which means you'll be losing out. Or you are blind only to find that the program is only available in cited format. Therefore, it is important for you to inform the university uh, of your needs so that we can always accommodate you as we don't apply the one size fits all approach. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I urge you all 
to join hands against the prejudice that constitute the biggest barrier against children with disabilities. As our chair uh, mentioned earlier, uh, we have a challenge with disclosure. We encourage students not to conceal their disabilities because while we respect your right to disclose or not to disclose your disability, you may not demand or or, or request uh, or receive reasonable accommodation from the university if the university is not aware of your disability and your needs. Disabilities are not always visible. We have uh, two forms of persons with disabilities. There are those who are born with a disability, who had the disability. And I must say, uh, students, disability can be acquired by anyone, anytime. And those of you who acquire disabilities during their studies, please disclose so that the university can provide reasonable accommodation to you. The information provided will be kept confidential. Uh, I'd like to emphasize that uh, the Advocacy and Resource Center for Students with Disabilities, uh, amongst its staff members, uh, there are those who are born with disabilities and those who acquire disabilities. These particular staff members, they have a first-hand experience of disabilities. Like just to give an example, in my case, I'm a wheelchair user, I'm, I'm T10 and T12 paraplegia. Then I have that first-hand experience of disability. When you disclose, we'll understand exactly on how to accommodate you. We are also aware of students who are reluctant to disclose their disability uh, due to the fear of stigma and victimization. But I must say, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that disclosing a disability won't attract any stigmatization or victimization. You will only receive reasonable accommodation from the university in order for you uh, to study without any challenge. Uh, in terms of the terminology, from time to time, we hear our students in corridors saying um, disabled students, uh, your student, your fellow uh, student is not disabled, is a student with a disability. Just to give an example, if you say uh, your alarm is disabled, the alarm system does not serve any purpose. And if you say this, your fellow student is disabled, you are saying that this, uh, your fellow student does not serve any purpose, of which is incorrect. It's always see the person before the disability. And again, please let us refrain from uh, calling our fellow students as the wheelchair user or the wheelchair bound or the, the, the blind. Let's use the names that they were given by their parents. If you are, you are a fellow student with a disability, the name is Joe or the name is Pintias, please address uh, the student as Pintias or as Joe. And again, uh, let's refrain from saying uh, certain students are normal because immediately you say then uh, we have a group for normal students. We are implying the, uh, the opposite to uh, students with disabilities. Remember, all students are normal, irrespective of your disability. And uh, in terms of the age credit, I'd like to share this with you, uh, students. In cases where you come across your fellow student who's on a wheelchair, please do not push them without uh, asking for, for a permission, whether they need assistance or not. Because from time to time, when a person is sitting on a wheelchair, when they push themselves, they sit in a particular position. When they're being pushed by another person, they, they readjust to a different position. Because by so doing, when you push them without requesting uh, for a permission, you may end up, uh, they may end up falling, of which that is not your, that was not your intention, but yours was to assist. Please communicate. And again, if maybe in the library or in, in, in your study rooms, you come across your fellow uh, blind student, please do not grab the arm and thinking that the student is going to the same direction that you are going to. Find out from the person whether they need assistance or they are waiting for somebody else. Communication is key. And for students who are using guide dogs, please do not pet guide dogs. 
again for students who are deaf, don't shout at, uh, don't shout when communicating to them. Just simply look direct to them and talk uh, uh, gently. And then uh, in, uh, here are the contact details of the Advocate Center for Center for Students with Disabilities. Uh, if you need assistance, we are here for you. Uh, please do not hesitate to contact us. In conclusion, I'd like to leave you uh, students with a quote by Thomas Edison. Um, our greatest weakness lies in giving up. The most certain way to succeed is always to try just one more time. I thank you. Much here and good morning, uh, ladies. All right, thank you, Pentius. It also helps if I mute myself as well. Um, but thank you for that very interesting presentation. Students, we did pre-record it um, due to the activities of the colleagues. Um, you know, things are very busy at the university as we're finishing up the registration period. All right, so next on the schedule is we are going to be looking at the RPL process. Now that is understanding recognition of prior learning. Uh, the colleagues also are traveling at the minute, so but they did send us also a video that we could work through um, and the, what we're going to play for you guys so you don't miss out on anything. So I'm just going to again ask my colleague, uh, co-producer Godfrey, to share it up and then we're going to send it live in a few seconds. Uh, thank you, Godfrey. Uh, Godfrey, I think the sound isn't coming through. Alright, put up the volume. I think I can hear something there. The university and you are successful at Utambri Haji, an RPL specialist in the Directorate of Inst Instructional uh, support and services. I'm going to take you through what we offer as the recognition of prior learning. And firstly, I would like to congratulate you for your uh, admission into the university and your successful registration now. Now that you've chosen your own qualification, I would love to take you through our offerings as RPL office. What is uh, recognition of prior learning? We are the unit which recognizes relevant skills, competencies, knowledge, and learning that have taken place outside the formal education and training system. Meaning that if you have got some work experience, but you would love to uh, be admitted into a particular qualification at UNISA and uh, you don't meet those minimum requirements stipulated in that qualification, you can contact our office so that we can assess your experience and see if it can uh, enhance you to be qualified or to enter into the qualification. That is the first part of RPL. But secondly, we have got the RPL, which deals with uh, the credit. Uh, in this instance, if you have got work experience and you think that after you have been admitted here at UNISA, when you check at your uh, program or your degree or diploma, you realize that in one of the modules or in two of the modules, some of those things you have already done them at work, either being supervised or you were actually the supervisor. And you feel that you don't need to repeat those things in that module as much as you don't you didn't have the theoretical background, but you have got a relevant working experience around those modules. You can approach our office 
and after identifying that module our office will assist you in developing a portfolio which can be sent to the assessment panel and you will be granted that module it means you will be exempted from doing that module because of the work experience you would have demonstrated through the portfolio that you are and you know what the module entails very important with regard to rpl for module credit is the fact that we will not give you more than 50 percent of the modules for example if the module i mean the program or the qualification has got 30 modules it means we will not give you more than 15 of the modules that are in that specific qualification through rpl is therefore important to note that if we exceed that uh, 50 percent the university rule is that you might not be able to acquire the acquire the qualification under the university name the other rpls for access into qualification and rpl for career development are not important at this point in time because you have already accessed into uh, access the qualification or admitted into the qualification therefore those other rpls are not important and we are going to deal with the R rpl for module credit rpl is not credit exemption i think most of you might be aware of the fact that if you've studied in other universities and you would like to be credited those modules there is a form which is called dsar04 which you must complete and send it via email to the relevant email address in that form so that you are able to be exempted from various modules i gave the examples of uh, the academic records from university of pretoria value university of technology and twani university of technology as a distance learning university we are aware of the fact that our students some of them start with the residential universities but later would like to, to join our university and therefore we don't want them to lose out on the modules which they might have acquired from their previous universities rpl for credit module as i said that on step number five it means as soon as you are registered as you are now you must identify the module which you think uh you have got enough experience and you can write portfolio about and you follow all the steps until you receive a feedback on the assessment of your portfolio which means that you must contact the rpl coordinator in the particular college of which i will share the information with you later other steps are self-explanatory please go through them and make sure that when and if you have got experience and you want it to be assessed against the module you use those steps uh, in our university we have uh, identified some uh, modules with uh, high rpl applications for example in the college of law we have got law of persons in college of education we have got teaching practice uh, for either pgce uh, senior phase and also in the College of Economic and Management Sciences. We have got a module by the name of uh, Business Management, NMB 1601, of which students who have applied for uh, RPL via uh, of, for the module RPL have successfully completed and were able to do the portfolio and pass so these are some of the examples i'm just bringing them to your attention so that if you are in various qualifications please zoom into them and see if you are already working so that you can develop that um, uh, portfolio and uh, be credited those modules but depending on your sector you might identify other modules which i didn't list here which you feel that you have got experience of 
RPL process is not for free and the handling fee for uh, RPL for module is around is around 330 for undergraduate qualifications and uh, you, you will know that uh, there is also uh, if there is a need for further assessment you will be charged another 330 but in all in all you will be uh, paying around uh, 330 for a module in order to apply for RPL. Uh, our contact information are as follows, uh, depending on uh, you can see for masters and doctoral studies of which I think this orientation is not focused for them, you, they can contact myself and Ms. Nkwash, but for the rest of undergraduate qualifications and honours, please con contact the colleagues in various colleges as listed in the information. Thank you so much and all the best with your studies and we hope to see you around completing your uh, qualifications with ease and we can rest assure you that you are joining um, thousands and thousands of students who have graduated at UNISA using this form of distance learning and we hope the information we have shared with you shed some light in terms of RPL and we hope and believe that if you take advantage of RPL, especially for those who are already working and have gathered relevant experience, the, it can be of assistance to enable you to be credited some modules. Thank you so much. All the best with the rest of the year. All right, thank you colleagues from the RPL unit they definitely gave us quite a lot of information there so hopefully you guys if you've got those type of questions the contact details are available so you're most welcome to contact the, the colleagues there at the rpl office um so thank you again godfrey for the share as well um running the videos and getting it going much appreciated all right, colleagues, so let's move on with the next item in the program. As I said, it is jam packed, so we do have a lot of presenters to get through. And next is understanding the student funding. Now, I do see quite a number of questions coming in uh, with regards to NSFAS, I did see, and student accounts and bursaries and all such things. So yes, this is definitely going to hopefully answer all those questions that you guys have. I do see the colleagues are responding. Uh, to all the Q&A chats that are coming through, so please do keep sending them along. So there are two presenters that I have so far uh, who are going to be speaking about NSFAS and bursaries, so I'm going to call Ms. Mopri Penyani to come and talk to you guys about NSFAS, and then once she's done, then we're going to hand over to Mr. Molamani Lesabi, who is going to then speak further on with bursaries and student accounts. Over to you, Mopri. Good afternoon, colleagues. Good afternoon, students. Can I ask for my colleague, or Mr. Lesabi, to go through first? Then I'll follow him. I'll follow him. Okay, no Thank problem. You. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you, David, and uh, all the organizers of the workshop. Let me just quickly prepare myself. Good day, colleagues and uh, students present. My name is Mulemani Lesabe uh, from the Directorate Student Funding uh, Bazaar Reception. Uh, sorry, dear and, sir, um, you're not coming through. We're just seeing a background. OK. 
Okay. Just make sure your camera is, the, the slider is not covering your camera maybe. Is it fine now? Um, no, we're still seeing that uh, Unisa 150 banner and we're not seeing you. Maybe just start your, or share your presentation and then we can continue. Okay. Are you able to see my presentation, David? Um, no, I'm still seeing the 150 years banner. Maybe just switch off your camera and then just share your desktop. Ah, there we go. Okay, is just. Yep, is it fine well, now? Okay, just open your PowerPoint and then run your PowerPoint. Okay. Uh, thank you once more, David. Uh, good day, colleagues. I'm sorry, Thanks. just run it in full screen, please. No, PowerPoint itself. PowerPoint. Um, it, you can hit F5 on your keyboard. That should um, take you to presentation mode. Or you can click on slideshow in the menu option. On the presentation. Yeah, yeah, in, in PowerPoint itself. Just click on slideshow. It's next to animation and record. Right on top of your screen. Yep, there we go. Beautiful. Then click on from beginning on the left hand side, top corner. Is it fine now? Uh, did you click on from beginning? Yeah. There's a button just under file. Yep, click on it. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. All right. Okay, uh, like I've said in the beginning, my name is Mulemane Lesabe. Uh, I'm from Directorate Student Funding, uh, Baza Reception. I'm accompanied by colleagues from the Directorate to assist with uh, Q&A, Q&As. Uh, the Directorate Student Funding administer donor, donor funds in the form of study loans and bursaries according to donor criteria. Our main aim is to assist financially needy and academically deserving students. Our vision is to be a beacon of great hope and excellence to our students and donors. Our mission is to effectively and efficiently administer all funding at our disposal by ensuring that every stakeholder, particularly students and donors, receive high quality service from a committed team. The directorate administer NSFAS, UNISA, and private bursaries. Uh, the bursary applications. <clears throat> uh, re recruitment and selection is handled in two ways. The first one is uh, through donors. When you apply through the donors, like for example, uh, Auditor General, Houghton City Region Academy, uh, Teachers, Houghton Department of Education and so forth. And then the, the second one, it's uh, UNISA receives application on behalf of, of donors. Here we, there's a direct invite or recruitment via my life email address. Uh, which we get information from our database. Or secondly, we advertise through the web page. Or internally, we develop a web portal 
via my UNISA, whereby students can uh, apply directly. We also uh, participate in student orientation sections, whereby we can provide the information as to how to apply, and also through the social media platforms. What is important is that application period is between November to mid January every year. Application to continue before registration closes. And the type of the types of bursaries, bursary funding, we've got Department of Transport, uh, Hillensburg Trust, uh, different CITAS, Uni UNISA Merit Bursary, UNISA Postgraduate Diploma and Honors Bursaries. Uh, for the Department of Transport, Bursary, uh, who can apply? It's South African citizens who are 35 years older and below, at least an average of 50% on their previous year of study, and then sponsor undergraduate and postgraduate NQF level six to nine student student registered for the following qualification may apply. Bachelor of Commerce in Transport Economics, Honors Transport Economics, and Honors Logistics. And then what does uh, the Department of Transport Bursary cover? It covers tuition fees, at textbooks, and the bursary does not fund failed or repeating modules. And then how you can apply, you can complete an application form. Download application form on my UNISA uh, under loans and bursaries. The applications and inquiries must be sent to Ms. Refilo Makaye. Uh, her email address is on the screen. The second one is a Hillensburg Trust Bursary. Uh, who can apply is South African citizens. Uh, financially needy and academically deserving students, missing middle category. And then undergraduate and postgraduate students with an average of at least 60% on, on their prior year academic and registered for the following uh, in the following fields of study. That is medicine, technology, visual arts, music, and health sciences. And then Hillisbeck Trust Bursary. <clears throat> what does the bursary covers? It covers tuition fee, prescribed textbooks, transport allowance, and any related costs and laptop. Uh, but the laptop is only applicable for first time bursary recipients. Applications and inquiries must be sent to Mr. Lesabe. The email address is uh, it's there, or you can follow the link uh, that is given there. And then with regards to the CETA bursaries, uh, who can apply? Student does, does not administer, UNISA does not administer the application process, but students may apply directly to CETA using uh, the below links. Uh, the students must be South African citizens who are between the ages of 18 and 35. The type of CETAs that we have that are assisting in terms of uh, sponsoring students, it's FACET, which is Finance and Accounting Services Sector Education and Training Authority, uh, with their uh, web, web address. Then the second one is Construction, Education and Training Authority, CETA. And then the other one is Transport Education Training Authority. Uh, which mostly covers the, the qualifications in the field of uh, transport. And then the other one is SACITA which is Safety and Security Sector Education and Training Authority, uh, which covers uh, 
qualifications related to safety and security, law, and so forth. And then ATDP CETA, education training and development practices, CETA education and training. <clears throat> this one covers a, a whole range of uh, qualifications. I can say all the uh, the fields you can, the students who are interested to, to apply for that, they can access the application on their website. And then Bank CETA. Bank CETA covers uh, qualifications related to to uh, banking and finance. Also, we've got service CETA, uh, which is service services sector education and training. <clears throat> this focuses on skills development, and their focus is upskill youth through various educational sectors. Uh, if you need more information on on these bursaries, or you can drop an email to Ms. Uh, Jagin Lovu, or you can access the information on our website under bursaries and loans. Then the next one is uh, UNISA Merit Bursaries. Uh, South African citizens registered for a formal qualification in any discipline at UNISA may apply for this bursary. And students who on their second year of study and at least an average of 75% and above in their previous year of study, and they must be financially needy and the middle uh, missing middle students qualify uh, to be considered for the bursary. The capped amount kept to an annual family income of 600,000. And then student must be registered for a maximum of five modules per semester and equivalent for year courses. The UNISA Merit Bursaries, uh, what does it cover? It covers tuition fees, prescribed textbooks, and the bursary does not cover failed or repeating modules. And how you can apply, you complete the application form. Uh, you can download the application form from my UNISA or use the link uh, UNISA undergraduate bursaries. And then applications and inquiries can be sent to Mr. Manamela. His email address is on, on the presentation. And I thank you. I thank you all. Uh, students, we are looking forward to your applications if opportunities arise. I wish you all, all the best in your studies. Thank you. All right, thank you. That was very useful and information there. Thank you, colleague. All right, without further ado, now we're going to hand over to the next presenter, uh, Ms. Mumpai who's going to now continue with her side of the presentation. As I said, there's quite a few presenters with this one. Um, so over to you. Thank you so much, Program Director. Good afternoon, colleagues again, and good afternoon, students. I'm just going to share my presentation. Quickly. Please advise me if you see the presentation on the screen. All right, I'll do so. Thank you. Yes, perfect. Firstly, my name is uh, Maupi Penyenye from the Direction of Student Funding. I'm going to go through the NEFSA's site of funding. My colleague just went uh, through the Bazaar site. Student funding, I think the introduction and all that my colleague most of the time went through with the how we, who we are in UNISA, but basically in short, we administer payments for the students in terms of study loans and bursaries as well. Inside NEFSAS, we've got a different type of funding that are administered still by NEFSAS. I'm going to go through NEFSAS D head grants, NEFSAS bursaries, which are Funza Lushaga, Disability Fund, TRC, DMV, and CITES. 
I'll start with the NEFSAS one, which is the most popular one. Applications, please note, are currently closed for 2023. Application for the following year opens around August, and they will run through January uh, the following year. Application are done strictly online through the NEFSAS website, which is www.nefsas.org.za. And please note, applications are fully administered by NEFSAS and UNISA does not have an input or does not even have that authority to fast track the applications. How does the registration process go in terms of NEFSAS? Once the student has applied and then they are approved, NEFSAS will send uh, UNISA the approved list of students and then on that list as well they will also include the rejected students to the university at the beginning of the year. Please note uh, all the approved and the rejections must be sent to UNISA or to the institution so that we can be able to assist the student in terms of guiding them as to are they approved, are they rejected. And then after the list has been sent we will allocate the student fund to the students by, by just activating their registration. Those are the for the approved students, which basically mean with the list, we take the approved student, we activate the registration because by that time, most of the students will still be temporarily registered. Then after we activate the registration, then UNISA will send through what you call a registration data or a template to NEFSAS. That uh, template is just to show NEFSAS that the student is registered at UNISA for which course, how many modules, and what is the cost of that modules. And once NEFSAS receives that registration data on their site from the university, they will verify the following still about the student they will still check if ever the student is registered for a qualification that NEFSAS fund. They will check if the student has not reached the N plus two, and they will also recheck the household income if it did not reach the threshold. If ever the student meet all the requirements in terms of the income qualification, the N plus, the successful data will then be posted and linked to the uh, to a linked report to show that this student has been had passed the selection process. Then after the link uh, has been done, on UNISA will get that report, and then that's when we distribute the allowances. Student, can we please take note of the following? This process was applied in first semester, then from second semester. The process changed because NEFSAS took over all the allowances. They are processing them directly to the, to the students. So the first semester, how we do it was happening is UNISA will take those students who are on the linked report. They will start to process the allowances and incidental allowances. However, please note that for incidental allowances that is getting paid every month to the student. To qualify for it, the student needs to register at least 10 modules for the year. And then the incidental allowance for the year is 3,045. And then the student will receive 304 rent and 50 cents per month over 10 months. And then for the learning material allowance, there is a calculation in place to calculate how much is the student getting. So if a student registered from one to four module, the student will receive 700 per module. Say for example, the first semester I've registered for two modules, I will get 1,400 for the learning material allowance. Please note any student that registered five modules or more, we allocate student 5,460 
and then that 5,460 is the allowance for the whole year. So should you register five modules per semester, and then second semester you add another five modules? Unfortunately, you would have received your total allocation for the learning material in the first semester being 5,460. Meanwhile, if the student register two modules for the first semester, they will get 4, uh, 1,004. They add another two modules second semester, they will get another 1,004. But if ever they register two modules, then they add another three modules second semester, they'll be having five now. We are just going to top up on top of what they receive first semester to put it at a maximum of 5,460. Please note that the students with this learning material allowance, they are given a choice between a laptop and the actual money for the, for the allowance. Students cannot get both of them, unfortunately. They have to choose one. And then once the student receives the money for the LMA, they've got an option to use that those funds to purchase the prescribed books or they can even purchase their laptop with that money. Allowances disbursement process start upon receiving the linked pro, uh, report from NEFSAS. And then the allowances were paid directly into the NEFSAS into the students' bank accounts. And then the student was getting their link on their My Life email account. They will update the banking details and then the money will be paid over directly to their bank accounts. Second semester registrations. NEFSAS funding is valid for a full duration of the qualification. There is no need for student to apply unless the student fail or change how uh, there's a change in household income or the student has got a N plus rejection, especially when it comes to the higher certificate being completed. Maybe they took too long to complete the higher certificate. And then as well as should the student have a gap year not being funded by NEFSAS, the student should, will need to reapply. Students who are currently funded for their second semester registration will be automatically registered. With that, you basically mean if ever you are part of the list, you are registered for second semester, you are approved by NEFSAS, registration will be automatically activated. Students who were funded late in the first semester, their registration for second semester as well will be activated automatically. Second semester allowances, like I have, I have mentioned before, NEFSAT is in, uh, have introduced, introduced their direct payment method for paying students' allowances. So for second semester allowances, they will be paid by NEFSAS. And then student will be receiving an onboarding SMS where they can register online to enable them to receive their, their remaining allowances. And then NEFSAS use, use the service provider called Coinvest to distribute those allowances for UNISA students. Should the student be rejected by NEFSAS, it can be with the M plus or it can be with an income or maybe any other reason. The student will be given an opportunity to submit the appeal. This opportunity is given to both new and returning students. And please note the appeals must be submitted directly on their NEFSAS portal. Some of the students, when they appeal, they'll be required to submit propensity letters as well. These letters, uh, they are sent to the students' My Life email addresses via, uh, via the, the My Life email accounts. Students who are registered for higher certificate the previous year and they've completed the higher certificate then maybe 2023 they are starting with their formal qualification, meaning a degree or a diploma. But they were rejected due to N+, which basically means they took too long to complete the certificate. 
can appeal the rejection and submit the higher certificate completion letter as well as the prosperity letter. Students who submitted their appeals through NEFSAS are advisable to pay registration fee and finalize their registrations. The reason for this is normally the outcome for appeal from NEFSAS will only be available after the closing date of registrations. Unfortunately, if you've submitted your appeal, we cannot finalize any registrations without the funding lists being sent to us. I'll move over to the refunds. Students at times, sometimes you find that they are getting approved later and then by that time when they get approved, the student has already paid registration fees to UNISA so that they can get registered. Please note those uh, students, they do qualify to get the refunds for the money that they've paid in for the registration. Students are not required to ap apply for the refund, but instead is initiated from our side. Only students who made payments towards their fees are refunded. So if you cancel a module after we paid, uh, NEFSAS has paid, unfortunately that money for cancellation cannot be refunded to the student because it's not being paid by the students. When you process the, the refunds, please note supplementary exam, historical debt, module cancellation fees, foreign levies will be deducted from the, that refund amount because all these uh, charges, they are not being covered by NEFSAS at all. Refunds are paid directly into the student's bank accounts. I'll move over to the NEFSAS disability. The NEFSAS disability funding is a full cost bursary aimed at providing financial support to students with disabilities who are financially eligible and academically deserving. Qualifying students get assisted, assistive devices such as wheelchair, hearing aids, adaptable laptops, and women or other supports such as caregivers, sign language interpreters, as well as guide dogs. Application, the application process, registration process, and allowances are exactly the same as the NEFSAS, how they follow. Application directly at NEFSAS, allowances, calculation 700 per module, as well as the monthly allowance exactly as NEFSAS at 350 cents. And then the only difference when they submit the application at NEFSAS, they have to submit the annexure A as well to kind of uh, explain the nature of the disability that the student has. Student can apply for the assistive device to the maximum of 50,000 or the human uh, support for maximum of 50,000 if there is a need. Pre-funded bursary, uh, the first one that I will go through is Funza Lushaka. The bursaries are done online on Funza Lushaka website. The website is www.funzalushaka.gov.za. Funza and Department of Basic Education, UNISA College of Education, as well as Division of Student Funding, will sit to do the selection of the students who applied for, for Funza Lushaka. Please note, this is a merit bazaar that pays students registering for education qualifications only. Allowances are calculated based on modules registered. Pre-funder NEFSA's bazaar continued. TRC, we've got the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Student must apply directly at the Department of Justice. After they have been approved by the Department of Justice, they will send that approved students to NEFSAS. NEFSAS will send to that, those students 
through to UNISA. The TRC pays tuition fees, including registrations, book allowance, transport allowance, as well as the food allowance. This bursary, please note, is, uh, is for those beneficiaries or people who's been through the apartheid system that has affected them in a, in a way to qualify for this TRC bursary. Please note if ever there is any queries that is related to the DSF or student funding, we've got a mailbox that you can send your queries to is dsf nexus at unisa.ac.za. We have a dedicated team that work on this mailbox daily. So you can forward all the queries to this mailbox. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, colleagues. That was very interesting. A lot of data information that you guys have given to the students. So guys, um, I did notice there was a little bit of a snag with the YouTube channel. So if you did miss something, what we're going to do is we're going to upload this version of the recording through Teams, and we're also going to upload it onto YouTube. So in to make sure that you haven't missed anything at all. Do post those questions. I see lots of questions coming through. And I see there's a lot of colleagues that are answering those questions. So please don't be shy, ask away and um, to ensure that you get your answers to your questions. All right, so next, uh, next in the program, we are going to be speaking about the student debtors. So again, this is quite an important element that you need to understand as a student. How does it all work? And it's my pleasure now to invite Ms. Tumi Mola to come and present. Uh, everything that you guys would need to know about student debtors and also with the contact details and things like that. So um, I would really like if Ms. Muller could share a presentation and then we can switch you over to the live event. Over to you. Thank you so much, David. Uh, good afternoon, colleagues and students. Uh, my name is Maureen Tumi Muila. I'm with my colleagues, uh, Mr. Ramoshale and Mr. Chikala, who will be assisting me uh, with the Q and A's and to answer the chat box. And at the end of the, um, this presentation, if you, you may have any question, you're welcome to ask. I will share my presentation now. Just a moment. Please advise if you can see my screen on your side. OK, I'll do so. Yes, there we go. I can just make it run full screen, please, and then you continue. Thank you. Thank you, David. Um, our aim um, with this presentation is to make sure that our students have a smooth journey towards their aspiration. Uh, we are a student debtors from finance department. So this will be our presentation for today. So the contents that we'll be looking at, we'll be looking at the popia. AUD, which is acknowledgement of debt, quotations and pro forma invoices, uh, payment method and references, payment for fitted, cancellation date and cooling off period, refunds, financial suspension and reinstatement, account flex, historic debt and handover debt, policies and rules. All right, um, sorry about that. Uh, am I audible? Yes, loud and clear. Oh, all right, 
Thank you. Just that I'm trying to continue with my slides, but I'm stuck. So I thought it's network connectivity. My apologies. Yeah. Let me just stop uh, sharing and then stop presenting and start over because it, it's giving me an error. OK, no problem. Thank you. All right. Yep, take your time. Please, no advi problem. please advise if it's showing on, on your side. Yes, it is showing. OK, thank you so much, David. All go. right, Great. moving on to Popia. According to the Popia Act, which is uh, the Protection of Personal Information Act, uh, the university is not allowed to disclose a student information to a third party without the student's written consent, proof of identity, or the student and a third party natural person certified copy of ID or a company waiver form, sponsors or buzzery. So this is a more understanding of a popular a site with a, like most of the students, they thinking a, how their information is protected on our site. So we are not allowed to give out any personal information like academic records, exam timetable, etc to a parent or friend, relative or spouse on your behalf. Students who are 18 years uh, can sign their own admission and registration form. When you are under 18, you need a parent or legal guardian. If your rights have been violated, you may report um, to the directorate. I just moved very quickly. Okay, you may report to your directorate, and we also have um, the the email for the directorate and the contact details for for them. So you cannot share uh, my UNISA logins with your friends. Always protect your personal information. Also, make sure that. Your My Life email account is always working. You can so that you can communicate with us. Please uh, do not use your private email. Maybe, for example, a Gmail account. Please do not use. Always make sure that your My Life email is activated. So we're going to move on to the AOD, which is the acknowledgement of debt. So. With the acknowledgement of debt, that's where we allow students to register without paying the, the minimum fee. But now they need to meet our conditions, whereby they need the AOD forms and they need to settle their historic debt. And they have to be temporarily registered for that current year. We allow students to work. Um, Proof of income, they should have proof of income, meaning they should be working. At least they should have a pay slip or a bank statement that will reflect their salary. Or maybe uh, a person responsible for paying the study fees, you can also provide a, a consent letter so that we can verify their income. And they also need to uh, provide us with the pay slip or their bank statement. OK, moving on to our next slide. We also have. Um, we, we also consider. The. Um, OK, firstly, before I move on to the international students. Uh, with the. When the student is registered for AOD, you need to honor the previous one before we can accept you for the next current uh, registered uh, modules. Without paying the uh, registration, the outstanding fee, you don't qualify for the academic year. 
AOD is only for South African students. For foreign students who reside with, uh, within South Africa, they need to provide us with a copy of pa passport or identification. Only those who reside within South Africa. We also consider uh, first time NS1 students if they can comply with the above conditions. Moving on to quotations and performer invoices. We only issue out uh, for current year, not previous year. And you may contact the college or faculty if you request a quotation for your models. Performer invoices is issued for current year after a full registration. We require the following before we can issue out the performer invoices. We need a name of employer or sponsor, their address, VET number if applicable. UNISA fees are tax exempted. Therefore, we do not issue out tax invoices. Payments method and references. These are the, the, the link for uh, payment uh, method. Please familiarize yourself with this link. And always make sure that when you make payment, uh, you need to use your student number and the correct reference to avoid delays. Because sometimes students, if you are given a reference number, you don't use your student number, you only use the, the reference number. But what's important when you make the payment so that we can know who's making the payment, make sure that you have to allocate your student number and the reference for uh, what you are paying for. For example, if you are paying for study fees, we have a specified reference that you should use for application fee, for library, and etc. As you can see below, we have we also have um, our email address whereby this inbox, if you have any finance re related inquiries, you can also um, send us an email. We always answer a, a, this email and we, our most of our colleagues are always working on this email. And also if you have, um, Payment issue, for instance, I just make an example whereby you incorrectly maybe inserted your wrong student number or you didn't insert the student number while you're doing the, the payment. We have to send this, uh, your, your proof of payment to our bank recon. And this is the email for bank recon, which is sasdepeat at unisa.ac.za. And it's very, very important for always, we, we do emphasize that small student, they should use the correct method of payment, especially when it comes to a uh, reference. You should use your student number and then you leave the space, then you allocate the correct reference of what you are paying for. And if, uh, this it's not allocated correctly obviously it will be sent to our bank recon and also when student uh, if maybe for example you had an aggregated or ex seek exam we do not have a specific reference where you can make payment but you make that payment to study fees you use the same reference for study fees and these are our banking details. We're using FNB and our account, our account name is UNISA Student Deposit, whereby you select um, UNISA as an uh, at the list of pre-approved beneficiaries and type UNI at the ATM. And these are, this is the references. The reference, that's where I was emphasizing about whereby you need to enter the student number 
space, just the space, no commas. You just need to leave out the space and then allocate the reference that you are paying for. Uh, South African student not using FNB for their EFT should please use the following income account number details, which is FNB, as you can see, a uh, UNISA student fees account, and this is the account number that they should use, which is a check account, and then also on the reference number, reference uh, site, you need to enter your student number, space, the reference number for study fees, application fees, and etc. It will depend on what are you paying for. Payments by employer or bulk payments, sponsors, a bursary, donor, and international student. They use a UNISA income account with the below uh, account numbers and then. For the bulk payment, kindly complete the payment advisor form, and you need form. You need to download uh, the payment advice form so that you can allocate the student details, which is a student number, initial and surname, and how much the student was allocated. Because sometimes uh, with the bulk payment, they, for instance, if they are paying for ten students, they will deposit the 100,000, but now we're not sure each and every individual student how much they are they paying for the students. So with the uh, payment advice, it will be uh, very useful because they need to allocate that student information. And then with our bank recon with this email, SASDPIT, they'll be able to allocate that amount correctly. Payment forfeited, uh, cancellation date and cooling off period. This is whereby um, it's 10 day, 10 days, cal uh, 10 calendar days in writing. Um, this is whereby, for instance, a student register their module uh, by the 1st of July. I'm just making an example. 1st of July and it, uh, it's activated and on the um, before maybe the, the 10 days is on the 10th of July within that 10 calendar days and remember we include the, the weekend within that 10 days if you decide to cancel your registration meaning the student will not forfeit anything but if you decide to cancel after the 10 days calendar, 10 calendar days, you will forfeit a minimum. So moving on with the payment that the student uh, should forfeit. So for first semester, by the 31st of March, a student, uh, if a student cancel before this date, the student will forfeit the minimum. But if you cancel after this date, meaning the student will forfeit a full payment. And by the 31st, which is uh, we including now the second semester, if the student decide to cancel before, they will forfeit the minimum. If it's after, the student will forfeit the full payment. And then for year modules, which is the 15th of May, this, the, 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 for year modules, the students are required to pay the second payment, which is if the student decides to cancel before the state, they will forfeit the minimum. After the state, they will forfeit the minimum and the second payment. That's for year modules. And then the 31st of August for year modules, meaning now, uh, if the student decides to cancel, uh, the student will will forfeit, uh, will therefore forfeit minimum and the second payment. If it's after, the student will forfeit full payment and the student will remain liable 
to pay the full outstanding balance. Moving along with the refunds. Uh, we do not refund less than 100 rent. And application fee or miscellaneous fee are non-refundable. We only administer formal qualification, refunds, uh, re uh, refunds. Then uh, you provide a completed refund form and then you need to, it needs to be accompanied by the compulsory document, uh, which uh, you just need to go to the link and check the domestic refund form. And we also have the one for international students. And as for the refund document, what we require, it's the refund form, the, the student ID, and the proof of payment and the confirmation banking details of the student. And there are other documents. If the student uh, paid via sponsor, there are documents uh, that are stipulated on the, on the refund form, whereby we're requesting an authorizing letter from the sponsor. Financial suspension and reinstatement. That's where most of the students, uh, they find this very, very tricky and they thinking uh, their modules is actually canceled. But now it's not canceled, it's suspension. We're just putting your, your, your modules on hold because now you failed to, to pay your outstanding balance. So now, Firstly, what we, we do as uh, finance, you will, we will send out financial suspension warning letter for the students so that they can pay their outstanding balance. If that outstanding balance, it's not paid by the initial date, your modules will be financially suspended. But that does not mean you're not going to write your exams or do your assignment, you can still do all of that. But now you won't be a, you, you won't have access to your results. And now your modules may be reinstated upon the two, these two conditions. If the student make payment, and you have to advise us after making payment, if you're going to write the exams, let us know that you have made payment. Kindly restate my modules. The second one, if exam department, they have received your exam script, after they've captured your exam script, they will restate the module for you. Thereafter, uh, it will show what it's outstanding. Because now the, the, the first point, you made payment and then we restate your modules. But now other students, they don't make payment same time. What they do, they write exams first and thereafter, that's when they will see that exams have reinstated the modules. Now the actual amount, outstanding fee, it's reflecting and there are no extra charges. The same amount, that was outstanding before financial suspension. That's the same amount that was stipulated on the statement of account that you are owing. Account flex. So with the study fee uh, debt, it's automatically lifted after the student has made payment. Remember, when you are owing, when you have an outstanding balance um, as student debtors, we will flag your account so that you cannot view your, your, your results and etc. and other things. And then you have a financial flag. If maybe, for instance, your debt has been written off, then we are going to uh, need you to pay the account thereafter 
we're going to adjust your account. And then after uh, uh, adjusting the account, that account will be lifted manually. That flag will be lifted manually. It doesn't, uh, it, we, we don't lift that uh, automatically. Uh, it's the same way as the study fee debt flag. So the, with this one, it's different. So after the student has made payment, if you have a financial financial flag, you have to let us know, and then we will check if the amount is fully paid. We will adjust the account accordingly and lift the financial flag. Hand over flags. We we hand over um, uh, for for collection, and we hand over to to the debt collectors. And other other flags that might affect the, the study fees, which are the matriculation exemption, the library debt, and etc. Uh, because the, it's allocated to, to, to the same student number, that's why you see that you, you, you will be having the, the, those flags because now it's allocated to the same student number. It's not a different student number. Yes. So the, the flag is updated manually as well. You need to contact, if you have a library debt, you have to contact the library uh, colleagues so that uh, after you've made payment, they can remove that flag. If you have the matriculation exemption that you're owing after making payment, then that flag will be lifted. And registration uh, will not be activated if the flag is not updated to an, a no. Because now remember when we flag we when we flag you, it will be a Y stand for a yes, meaning you have a flag. But when we update it after we make payment, we need to update it to a no so that everything can um, continue accordingly. And this is the um, contact details for library for if the student was flagged for library fees or any fines, this is where you contact them and this is their email address. History uh, debt. Sorry, yes. Jimmy, you got one more minute. All right, thank you. I'm um, just uh, finishing up. Just one more slide. Historic debt and handed over debt. We only hand over balances from 300 and above for collection. And this is our agency. It's Kumalo Masondo, Nogoma Imela, and collection. And the university re uh, reserves the right not to render services to students with outstanding balances. And please familiarize yourself with the UNISA student rules and policies. And this is the link that you can follow. And thank you so much. And that will be all from Student Debtors. Thank you. Thank you to me. Much appreciated. <laughs> Again, a lot of information. I hope the students uh, are actually dealing with all this information overload. Uh, but again, go to the YouTube channel. You can pause it. You can see the information so you don't have to panic about writing everything down, students. One very important aspect, students, is that security. So please do not share your password with anybody else. OK, this is so, so important. We're finding students are saying their details are being changed or modules are being canceled. But then when we check and investigate, we find that students are actually sharing their passwords with people, friends, family, whoever. So please do not share your password with anyone. If you receive emails in your My Life email account that says please enter your username and your password and they're claiming to be ICT or anybody for that matter, please take note, we will never ask you for your password. Just like a bank will never ask you for your PIN code, same with UNISA will never ask you for your password. So please just be careful of these scams that are going around. If something is free, then the product is you. OK, so just remember that. OK, before we hand over or now when we hand over to the next very important element, guys, 
I'm going to call Mr. Bojo Manjope to come speak to us about getting to know the role of the student development and the programs and services rendered. So this is also very, very important. So I'm going to hand over to you, to Bojo, so you can share your information with everyone. Thank you. Uh, thank you, thank you so much, uh, David. Uh, good afternoon, colleagues and students. And please advise if you can be able to see my slides. Yes, we can. Just please okay. run the presentation. All right. Thank you so much. My name is Debo Mangope. I'm currently student health and wellness practitioner in the Office of Student Development. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, let me start by. Can you see? Uh, yes, we can. Just run the presentation. You can click on slideshow. OK. All right, sorry about that. I don't know. Yeah, let me start by saying, by uh, explaining where is the student development located. Student development is one of the directorate in the Office of the Dean of Students. And the Office of the Stu Dean of Students or Student Affairs is al also is, is the office that is located in the portfolio of the registrar. Why do we need the Office of the Dean of Students or Student Affairs? Their, responsi their responsibility is the core curriculum directorate in support of UNISA academic project and related governance structures aimed uh, at... Sorry, Tabojo. Yes. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, it's okay. not in full screen yet. Uh, oh, maybe okay. just click on slideshow in your menu options. Between animations and record, you got slideshow. Oh, because I all right. In is the menu fine? options. Uh, no, is yes, it? there we go. Perfect. Oh, okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Sorry about that. Yeah, a aim at offering undergraduate and postgraduate degrees. As you know, that the main mandate of UNISA is to provide support through for students doing undergraduate and postgraduate and that's the core business of the office of the dean of students student what and then we, what is the role now of student development the primary role of student development is the promotion of core curriculum support for registered students in all aspects of their student work at graduate and postgraduate levels. We also are responsible for creating a nurturing environment to promote student access, well-being and student access. Facilitate the student voice in all governing structures of the university, fostering a sense of belonging to UNISA and in inclusive learning environment to implement leadership development programs. We also have a five key thematic, which is co-curriculum engagement activity in support of student psychosocial well-being, governance and student academic and civic success. The first one is UNISA student body national and regional presentation leadership and governance for students' body, including students with disability exposure and curricular workshops, seminar and, and, and coaching. The third one is student health and wellness empowerment through peer learning, youth economic empowerment, academic integration, partnership, research conference, student affairs practices, professionalism local and globally exposure and support of digitization for student success core curriculum and recognitions we also support the Codel in the contest in africa the first one is student counseling health and wellness the second one is the formal curriculum integration of diversity inclusion well and well-being into co-curriculum. The third one is co-curriculum towards enhanced employability and responsible citizenship. 
Student development, within student development, we have two division. The first division is student social development, which has the three legs. The first leg is the health and wellness, which is responsible for health and wellness conferences, training and development on student health and wellness program, peer educators programs. And also I want also to inform students that with regard to health and wellness, from the, beginning, from the end of August, we will be having health and wellness festival for registered students in all the regions that we will be covering and inviting different presenters to discuss the issues that our students are faced with. The second one is GBV program coordination for students, which is responsible for coordination of cases that involve students, awareness program, referral services for victims and survivors. The third one, which is training and development, is responsible for leadership training and development entrepreneurial co-curriculum projects. Within student development, we are also responsible for different kinds of GBV. And it's very important also to inform our students what are the forms of GBV that they can encounter with and where to go. The first one is physical, sexual, emotional, psychological, as well as the economic. This includes IPV, femicide, rape, sexual assault, sexual harassment, and stalking. At the third one, the increasing availability and sophistication of digital technology, for example, illustrates the need for institution to to, to be alert to this changing manifestation of violation and abuse in order to ensure their response remain relevant to the updates. In South Africa, GB has most often manifested as intimate partner violence, whether in short term or more permanent relationship, as well as sexual harassment and assault and rape. Our law defined these behaviors as follows. Effects of GBV, physical, bruises, bruises on or around the eyes, red or purple marks at the neck, sprained or broken wrist, chronic fatigue, shortness of breath, muscle tension, involuntary shaking changes in eating and sleeping patterns, sexual dysfunction, menstrual cycle or fertility issues in women, mental effects, hope, post-traumatic stress disorder, which is PTSD, including flashbacks, nightmares, severe anxiety, and uncontrollable thoughts, depression include prolonged sadness. Anxiety, low self-esteem, and questioning sense of self, suicidal thoughts or attempts, alcohol and drug abuse, emotional hopelessness. And the third one, which is educational, anxiety, depression, concentration, lack of focus, direct academic problems, fearful and unmotivated. And the second one, as I've mentioned on my previous, on my previous things that, that we've got two division within student development. And then the second one is the student governance. The student governance is responsible for student, student structures, governance workshop, SRC induction and compliance development, women in leadership, student parliament regional, student parliament national, policy review, SRC team building, capacity and team building, online voting system. And I also want to inform our students that we will be having SRC this year and inf uh, information, when will it start? It will be on my UNISA. Student governance programs, all programs within the student body must cover student success, development of leadership qualities, career path, intercession without rewards. 
question and answers and how to contact us you contact the, for the following lizette liru the email address is there or debuchomangope mingu tf at unisa.ac.za unisa florida campus and also the students health at unisa ac.za you can also check src details on my website and we also have the office in the in the main campus thank you so much thank you Deboho. much appreciated again students very important information um, that we're dealing with here and so if you know there's someone in need you've just seen some very important information that you could share with them but of course um, it goes way beyond just being a student it's also in the communities and the towns and cities we live in so yes so please do join those events they're very very useful and fruitful and you might find a nice network that you could work with uh, to help you with those challenges all right, so that brings us to the end of our program. Students, uh, I'm just trying to see if the SRC has managed to join Ms. Gumbi, uh, but I don't see that she's managed to join. So let me try one more time to see if I can get her to join. I know with uh, load shedding, the networks go all crazy and uh, it's even difficult to try and get online. Um, so it is a bit tricky over here. Um, let me just try one more time. So students, I hope you've enjoyed it. Tomorrow we are going to continue. We're going to be looking a lot more into student support, the regions, the, the colleagues that can help you with all the training that you need. So tomorrow is also very, very important. And there's a lot of information we'll be sharing with you, free courses that you can do. You can get Microsoft attendance certificates uh, for the one course specifically. So again, please do join us tomorrow. Um, it's going to be again a jam-packed session with a lot of information that you're going to need to know for your studies. Um, I see that it's not going through. So in that case, students, um, hopefully we shall we'll maybe join you in tomorrow. I hope you guys have enjoyed the session. A little bit tricky here and there, but I think we've managed to get through it. And I wish you guys a wonderful day further and please join us tomorrow. Thank you to the team, Godfrey and the technical staff and all the colleagues, uh, the presenters and the guys helping in the Q&A. Uh, we really appreciate your time and thank you once more. All right, see you guys then tomorrow. All the best students.